हेलो एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम टू माय चैनल सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट डीएनए फिंगरप्रिंटिंग अंडर फोरेंसिक्स एप्लीकेशंस सो प्रीवियसली वी हैड डिस्कस्ड अबाउट न्यूक्लिक एसिड्स अंडर व्हिच वी हैड डिस्कस्ड अबाउट आरएनए एंड डीएनए एंड डीएनए वैक्सीन्स एंड आरएनए वैक्सीन्स एंड आल्सो हैड मेड अ वन वीडियो व्हिच कंप्लीट व्हिच हैज गॉट ऑलमोस्ट ऑल थ्री और फोर टॉपिक्स ऑफ रिमेनिंग टॉपिक्स इन दिस मॉड्यूल फर्स्ट बट I got some, uh, you know, feedbacks that the video was not so clear and disturbance was there. Yes, there was a disturbance in that video. So I am making one more video, and will be making with a video based on the the major topics. So first video we will do it just in and fingerprinting. We finish it off, and then we can have separate video for proteins, lipids, and enzymes. So let's start. so what is dna fingerprinting most of us we already know that dna fingering fingerprinting is very famous especially those who watch for movies and all so dna fingerprinting is been used to identify a criminal in the particular crime scene right or to identify the parent okay and these kind of applications we already know the general applications so how to do this so that is the important aspect that we will be studying in today so dna fingerprinting we know that this particular in dna fingerprinting in crime scene there will be small small samples will be remaining of any criminal may it be a hair saliva semen or anything so that sample should be collected you need to collect that sample and then extract a particular dna from it extracting in the sense you make sure that in that particular when we know that from our uh, uh, almost all parts of our body has got our dna okay if my one particular hair small hair is has fallen somewhere somebody can take that hair and can extract the dna and they can compare with me along with some other if i am the suspect uh, suspect okay and then once they run gel electrophoresis and amplification pcr and then gel electrophoresis they can come uh, they can compare the bands of dna then they can say that i am the so this part that particular hair belongs to me understanding the similar way dna fingerprinting works that's why it is called as dna fingerprinting these particular set of individual dnas or you can say the specific regions are called as markers so the based on these markers only we are going to identify the particular person because they vary from person to person so let's start dna fingerprinting also known as a, known as a dna profiling or a genetic fingerprinting is a technique used in forensic science to identify an individual based on their unique dna profile the process involves in analyzing the specific regions of individual's dna called as markers which can vary from person to person so working of dna fingerprints for forensic applications there are many uh, you know steps are there first sample collection dna amplification dna analysis and dna comparison the sample collection as i told you you take that whatever Uh, in crime scene if you imagine you got a hair sample or a blood sample you take that sample you extract a dna from it and that dna should be pure and free from the contaminants so that is called you need to isolate the dna that is the first step sample collection second thing you need to amplify why we have to amplify amplification is nothing but to give to bring the more copies why we have to bring more copies because in crime scene we have got only small sample so we need to run a lot of tests we need more sample so for that we have got there is a device called pcr which is nothing but polymerase chain reaction which will give you more copies 2 to the power n in one cycle for example if you have one single strand of dna i mean this uh, strand of dna that will be made uh, given uh, you know in first step of pcr you will be getting the two samples right two strands and then for the second step you will be getting four like that so and third step you will be getting eight 2 to the power n it works so uh in detail about pcr i can make a separate video and then you can go through about how exactly the pcr works and what all the things are responsible i mean responsible for those particular amplification or creation of the number of copies so as of this topic this information is enough so dna analysis now you need to analyze right you have collected the sample you have purified the you have isolated the particular dna now you have more number of copies now you take the particular sample that you call it as a whatever you got it from the crime scene take that as sample as x and whereas three suspects a b and c 
Now you need to run on gel electrophoresis. What is gel electrophoresis? Again, separate video I can make. As of now, you understand this much. It is a kit where anode and cathode will be there. The gel will be there where the samples will be loaded and buffer solution will be there. Okay. So this particular kit, you need to in the, uh, uh, will have a gel. So in that gel, you need to create wells. Wells in the sense holes. Okay. You first have wells so that you can load your sample. So load X in one first uh, uh, well and second, third and fourth A, B, C samples you load. Those are the suspects DNA. Now you run this. That means you switch on this thing so that uh, we know that all biomolecules will be having and they are most of them are negative charges, especially D N is a negative charge. So it has to move from cathode to anode, right? So when it is moving from cathode to anode, not only this particular X is moving, but A, B, C, D N S are also moving. And at a particular, it will create different different bands. At particular, we will by comparing A, B, and C along with the X, we will come to know that if the band structures are matching with X, then we can say that. So for example, B band structure and X band structure are similar compa uh, compared to the A and B. So then the culprit will be the B, the criminal will be the B. So that's how we can identify that both the things DNA analysis and DNA comparison is done. Okay. So DNA comparison is typically done manually by the forensic analyst. So far it was typically done by the manually by the forensic analyst. As of now artificial intelligence is making sound and it's coming in every field and giving a prominent uh, results. So we can use the AI for particular uh, what you say the DNA analysis in future. Now the DNA profile consists of a series of bands on a gel as we discussed just now which represents a specific DNA of the fragment. Now the, these particular bands are compared to those from a control sample so that uh, to the A X equal, uh, is compared with the A B C and if there is a match it is considered a strong evidence that the biological sample came from the individual. Now the forensic DNA fingerprinting has become a critical tool in criminal investigation allowing uh, investigators to link individuals to crime scenes and to exonerate innocent individuals who maybe have wrongly been accused, right? Sometimes uh, what happens since uh, lack of evidence, they will simply arrest someone so that can be avoided, okay? So it has also been used to identify victims of natural disasters like tsunami or if the flight catches fire or accidents or all like mass casualties we can identify, we sometimes we won't be identifying the people because the body burned that this kind of you know situations we can use DNA fingerprinting to identify the particular individual and also to resolve the paternity disputes. So that's it for today. So tomorrow we will, uh, I mean next class we will we'll be discussing about the proteins.